Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and this is Destiny Deck by David Gonzalez. So before we go on, please like and subscribe. Check out cardmagiccourse.com. It really is very good, and it's even better now because it's all I'm doing. Uh, it's $9.99 a month, which is less than a coffee a week, and nobody's going out for one of them at the moment, and you get over 200 videos and more being added every single month and most weeks. But, and like and subscribe. Did I say that? Probably did. Do it anyway. This is a false deck, all right? So... It's a force deck from Card Shark, so I know I, I'm a big fan of Card Shark. There isn't really anything they've put out I don't like. I think Christian, like I've said before, knows what works, knows what works commercially, and knows what is impressive. This is, I'm going to show you the, no, I'm not going to show you the whole routine, but the idea of the, the destiny routine that's on this. You get a number of routines on here, all of which are brilliant, but you, someone, well, you spread the cards. Someone will point to any card, genuinely any card. Uh, you'll put the card there and show them that the rest of the deck is in new deck order, except for the gap where they've chosen a card that fills that gap, which is the four of hearts. So it goes up to three there and then five onwards. Now that happens like three times. And then at the end, there's this kind of traveling card routine where it vanishes from one pack to the other. But it's a Really, really nice routines. And you get other routines on there. A lot of them, I mean, they're brilliant, actually. They're not the ones you'd, you'd expect. There's one with, like, imaginary dice where you get four people and, and you can say, you're going to get the winning number. And it's almost like there's a lot of feel of sort of any card, any number-ish type things where he's done different things with that idea. Because, obviously, if you spread the cards, you can say any number, it'll be that card. Um, you can deal down really fairly. And whatever number they say, that'll be the card. You can get, you can shuffle it, which, I mean, this is just so fair. Uh, you can get them to shuffle it. If they can do a decent overhand shuffle, they can shuffle it. You can show that all the cards are different. You know, so you've got this, you've got this really hard to reverse engineer because once they've seen that fairness, and obviously you reiterate that, they say, look, you give them a shuffle. This is really fair. Okay, turn around. Any number between 1 and 52, and it's going to be that card. And obviously, it could be a force card uh, that you've done before you've forced on someone, or it can be, I'm going to get you to choose this card at any number between 1 and 52. There's a really nice dual reality thing where two spectators find each other's cards. There's a trick with two decks, um, which is like a double any card at any number. It plays like that, and it doesn't need two of these decks. It needs one of these decks and a regular deck. There's a mystery card plot where you put a mystery card face down on the table first, Spread the cards, they both touch one, you, you push the cards out, they look at it, um, and then you show that the card, you get them to name it, and they both name the same card. You turn the cards over that they've previously looked at, they've changed into different cards, and the mystery card that's on the table is now their card. So you've got all these really nice, clever ideas, all of which have this real feeling of fairness. Spread the cards, touch one, you know, show them all. It's, it's really, it almost feels hands off a lot of it. So that's what you're paying for, really. You're paying for a fourth deck, which gives you that peace of mind that you don't have to... And, yeah, for some of us, we go, well, why don't you just do a fourth? But you know when you just really want it to be, like, fair? And also you want it to be foolproof. I don't use a fourth deck very often, but if I was doing something where it all pinned on that thing, I'd want to do that, especially in a routine that was more complex. Things with a gaff deck, which is what this is, there's always a trade-off, isn't there? Like, the more gaff, the more careful you've got to be about certain aspects of it, usually. Whereas this kind of, it, it balances that out. It's a, it's a gaff deck that doesn't feel like a gaff deck, to the point when, when I got it, I looked at it, looked through it like that, and I couldn't see the gaff. And so it's, it's really nice done. If you've, if you've worked with card chart cards before, it has a similar way of doing it than a lot of their things. That sounds, that was terrible English, but you know what I mean. Method-wise, obviously I'm not going to go into that. And one of the challenges, I suppose, is that you're going to have to redo it at some point. Now, it doesn't matter because in here you get the thing to redo it with. I think it's fine to say that. So he has thought of that. And at the time, I bought these. I got these at Blackpool. Well, I didn't buy them. He gave them to me, to uh, to review. But he was selling seconds. Now, whenever someone says seconds, I go, oh. And, and because the way he treated them, there was kind of a bit visibility to it that was just I would be absolutely fine with because of that he was selling them in twos you get like a free one so it's worth giving him an email he said he was going to have them for a while 
Um, have a look on the website, email him, see if he's got the, the seconds anymore. If you want two decks, but if you want them to be perfect, uh, I would just get the one. But that might not be the case anymore. Other challenges, I suppose, is this is not a cheap deck of cards. So just make sure you're going to use them. And use-wise, use I think they're great for parlour, they're great for stage. If I was doing a gig where I had to get around a lot of tables, I would, I would just make sure that I'd kind of redone them first, I think. But as you say, you get all that with it. And he talks you through how to do that. The instructional uh, download is really, really in-depth. Uh, he goes through everything, and all the little hints, all the tips in the basic sort of way basic instruction at the beginning he sort of troubleshoots every issue you might have um, to make it more convincing but to be honest i got these out of the box showed my daughter a trick straight away it's always this sort of litmus test i hadn't even practiced it and she was like oh that's a really good one i didn't know how you did it that's a win for me so i know that that converted to real life is woo. so there you go the destiny deck david gonzalez and card shark all the links will be below thank you very much indeed have a great one stay safe and uh, oh, and these, and you can do stuff with these hands off, which at the moment is important. So, because you can do a just name a number and you can do everything really fairly. So, it is, it is got that. I've been thinking about ways of doing that um, over Zoom and Skype and stuff like that. So, check out Card Magic Course, like, subscribe, comment, be nice because <laughs> we're all feeling it at the moment. And have a great one. Cheers.